ChatGPT, which is a popular AI tool which has been used for solving a lot of developer problems and hacking problems, has also managed to pass the interview for Amazon. And I wanted to put it to a test that whether my 14 years of working as a cybersecurity person and in the cloud space is actually going to help me pass the tough questions that ChatGPT may have for me. And while you're watching this, feel free to judge me on whether I've answered the questions correctly in the comments below. But this is my attempt at doing a interview with ChatGPT. But wait, I need to change into my interview gear because you know it's a chat interview so i want to be serious all right so we're back so okay so now we're in chat gpt which is a free ai tool i will leave a link in the description so you can log in and just do the same thing yourself let's ask chat gpt for some five cloud security questions a few moments later all right these are really good questions i can definitely see them being asked in an interview as well so i'm going to go through them one by one definitely let me leave a comment below if you're happy with my answer or would you have answered them in a different way First question, what is the role of AWS Security Group and how do they enhance network security in the cloud? AWS Security Group are the equivalent of firewalls in a traditional network. Basically, they help us control what information can go out of a network and come into the network. The benefits of this in a cloud context is that it understands the cloud native concepts of EC2, RDS, and all the services that come with AWS. So you're able to attach a security group to those resources to control and manage the communication of data as well as the users, how much they can travel to the internet, whether they can travel back from the internet or just to the internet or not travel at all to the internet as well. Now, let me know in the comments what you think of the answer. If you would have worded differently, I'll go to the next question. Explain the concept of Amazon Virtual Private Cloud VPC and its security implication. VPC or Virtual Private Cloud is the Amazon network or a virtual network within the Amazon space. Now, Amazon manages its own network and we as users or customers of AWS, when we log in and create infrastructure or assets or resources or applications inside AWS, basically we are operating in the AWS network itself. And within that AWS network, you can have your own sub network for lack of a better word. Like it's like a network and there's another network inside it, and that network is basically your VPC. Now you can have a lot more than just one VPC in an AWS account as per the hard limit provided by AWS, but what it provides you is the security implication is that it helps you isolate your resources from different environments. Now, people can use VPC to differentiate between their development environment and production environment, or they can just have one VPC per AWS account for one application, and that's it. Let me know in the comment again, what do you think of my response, and if you would have worded this differently. I'll go to the next question. How does AWS ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of customers' data stored in the cloud? AWS has a lot of security services that can be available for the customers to use to make sure that they are using confidentiality, integrity, availability. They can use things like encryption, key management system, they can make sure their resources are protected and only available to selected people from an integrity perspective and only people who are allowed to change should be able to change it. That's your integrity. Confidentiality, people should have the right resources available to on the internet and the ones that should not be facing the internet should not face the internet. What is it? It's the internet. You can also manage to do all of this by doing some kind of encryption at rest or encryption at transit. You can have availability as high by making sure you have load balancers on other services that make the service available in a scalable manner by using auto scaling or any other scalability feature that is available in an Amazon context. So that's how you can make sure you have enough capability for your data to be confidential and retain the integrity of it and be available whenever required to the right user by using the principles of least uh, next question, what are the different types of encryption technologies used in AWS and how do they enhance security? Encryption ties really well into the confidential question you asked me earlier. If you have your data encrypted and not in plain text, you can ensure that someone who doesn't have the encryption key or the decryption key cannot access that data. Now, the different type of encryption that exists in AWS include encryption at rest, encryption in transit, and encryption in use. You did not know what the third one did you because you're clearly working on the December 2021 model. But as of today, there is a capability for confidential computing in AWS, which can be used to also encrypt data, which is in use at the moment. Take that chat GPT. <laughs> Next question and the final question, can you explain the difference between IAM roles and policies and how they are used to control access to AWS resources? IAM roles are basically the permission that are allocated to either a service or a user in AWS. Policies are further customization you can add onto roles within the AWS account that you're trying to work with by restricting access to say, you can just say Ashish has access to the admin role, but as a policy that's also attached to the role, you can also call out the fact that 
hey, that's great, but you cannot change any IM user. You cannot create IM user. You cannot create any resources. Activation required. Thor. Access denied. If you explicitly deny a policy is also attached to a user, that would just mean irrespective of what the roles are and whatever permission that I'm provided as a user, I would not be able to do it. So policies is almost like an overarching thing. An IAM role kind of gives you that, hey, this is a, a series of services that you can access, whereas the policies allows you to control whether you can not access the service completely. For Son of Odin. Access denied. Now that was the answer to my fifth question. If you would have worded this differently or if I missed something, definitely leave that as a comment below. And if you enjoy content like this about cloud security, definitely check out our cloud security podcast channel. We are talking about cloud security all day, every day on all our socials, including YouTube and LinkedIn. And if you have a request for a cloud security question, definitely drop that as a comment. If you have tried giving an answer and if you've tried chat GPT as a way to practice for your interview, definitely let me know in the comment as well. Definitely hit the subscribe and follow button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.